It was in July 2022 that Anwar, then still opposition leader, dropped this scathing remark on former finance minister Daim Zainuddin, saying that Daim would have sleepless nights when Anwar became prime minister. However, this was not the first time Anwar had blasted Daim for allegations of financial scandals. In 2018, when Dr. Mahathir Muhammad appointed Daim as chairman of the Council of Elders, Anwar, who had just been granted a pardon by Yang Dipatuan Agong, openly challenged Daim Daim's inability to explain the controversies surrounding his alleged misuse of national resources. In May 2023, when Anwar had already come into power, MACC initiated an investigation into Daim and businessman Halim Sa'ad. In December, the agency seized the Ilham Tower owned by the Daim family. Why is Anwar pursuing Daim? What controversial business transactions is he involved in? Why is he considered a confidant of Mahathir? And why did the MACC take such significant action to investigate him more than 20 years after he left office? Daim Zainuddin, aged 85, was a lawyer in his early years before transitioning to business, where he became involved in food manufacturing and property development. In 1980, he was appointed as a senator and achieved his first election victory in the 1982 general election. Two years later, Mahathir appointed him as the Minister of Finance, a position he held for eight years until 1991 when Anwar succeeded him. However, during the 1997 Asian financial crisis, differences of opinion between Mahathir and Anwar led to a fallout. Consequently, Mahathir dismissed Anwar from his roles as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, taking on the role of Minister of Finance himself for the first time. In less than a year, Daim assumed the role of Minister of Finance for the second time. Two years later, the position of Minister of Finance returned to Mahathir's hands until his resignation in 2003. In 2018, when Mahathir assumed the position of Prime Minister once again, he reappointed Daim for the third time as the Chairman of the Council of Eminent Persons CEP, and led a delegation to China to negotiate the ECRL rail network and other matters. It is interesting to note that Mahathir did not appoint then Finance Minister Lim Kuan Eng to be in charge of the negotiations with China, but instead allowed Daim to go ahead and visit China before Mahathir himself and his cabinet team did. Daim served as Mahathir's right-hand man during the privatization era, the 1997 financial crisis and his second term as Prime Minister, indicating that Mahathir would turn to Daim as a close confidant during critical times. Now, as the MACC scrutinizes financial matters from over 20 years ago, an analysis by Singapore's Lian He Taobao indicates that the real target in investigating Daim is, in fact, Mahathir Muhammad. Analysis from Channel News Asia indicates that during Daim's tenure as finance minister, he granted concession rights for government infrastructure contracts and power projects to politically connected businessmen. These individuals, who currently wield substantial influence across various sectors of the country's economy, include figures like Syed Mukhtar al-Bukhari, regarded as a close associate of Mahathir, Vincent Tan, founder of Berjaya Corporation Berhad, and Ananda Krishna, known as the Telecommunication King. During Mahathir's push for privatization policies in the 1980s, Daim, also serving as the purse keeper of AMNO, expanded AMNO's commercial interests through his role as finance minister. Daim's business associates included Halim Sa'ad, who was executive chairman of the once AMNO owned publicly listed conglomerate Renong Berhad, and Tajuddin Ramli, the former chairman of Malaysia Airlines, both of them collectively known as the Daim's boys. The growth of AMNO's business alliances resulted in the emergence of affluent Bumiputra individuals. However, Mahathir and Daim faced criticism for the perceived intertwining of politics and business, drawing attention to their accumulated wealth as a central topic of discussion. In October 2021, according to the Pandora Papers, which are a trove of documents obtained by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, ICIJ, and cited by Malaysia Kini, Daim Zainuddin's youngest sons became owners of a British Virgin Islands BVI firm, a business with assets exceeding 50 million ringgit by the ages of 9 and 12. 
and now in their 20s, Daim's sons, along with their mother, Naima Abdul Khalid, hold shares in numerous offshore companies, each with substantial real estate holdings in London. According to the Pandora Papers, the combined value of assets held by Dime's children, wife and associates through companies or trusts exceeds £25 million, equivalent to approximately 141 million ringgit. In addition to owning multiple offshore firms, Dime has also established trust funds in various locations, including the BVI through a Singapore-based trust company with the beneficiaries being his five sons. In response to Malaysia Kini, Daim asserted that all his businesses are legitimate, stating that he has been in business since the 1960s. He emphasized that he always paid the taxes for all investments and properties in any jurisdiction. Additionally, Daim pointed out that the Pandora Papers, which list trusts related to him, include some that belong to his children, of which he was unaware. The revelation of the Pandora Papers has sparked controversy in the Malaysian political landscape. In 2021, Anwar Ibrahim, then the opposition leader, called for an urgent debate in the Dewan Rakyat on the Pandora Papers' expose. However, Asha Azizan Arun, the then speaker, turned down Anwar's request. It was only after Anwar assumed power that the MACC, Bank Negara, the LHDN and the police collectively investigated the Pandora Papers. Additionally, in May 2023, the MACC opened several investigation papers against a Tan Sri business figure and a former senior minister about the embezzlement of national funds worth more than 2.3 billion ringgit. They are suspected of orchestrating a stock transaction that ultimately contributed to Malaysia's economic downturn in the 1990s. Malaysia Kini speculates that the MACC may be referring to the transaction involving the acquisition of Renong Berhad stocks by United Engineers Malaysia UEM, in 1997. The reported 2.3 billion ringgit stock transaction caused a 20% plunge in the Kuala Lumpur Composite Index. At that time, Halim Sa'ad was the controlling shareholder and chairman of Renong. The media later cited sources reporting that Daim refused to disclose his and his family's property holdings to MACC. He also clarified that he was not involved in the transaction where UEM acquired Renong Berhad stocks in November 1997. In December 2023, the MACC seized the Ilham Tower, owned by Daim's family, bringing Daim back into the limelight. Anwar insisted that there was no conspiracy in the investigation, saying that it was warranted because it was an open secret that someone has backed such a large fortune. Dia rahsia umum. Seorang yang menggondol kekayaan begitu besar. Biar ada siasatan. Jadi supaya pemimpin jangan dilihat sebagai uh, melindungi perasa-perasa uh, besar. Dan jangan buat tafsiran. Mas, setiap kali kita sentuh orang besar, maknanya ada muslihat. Jadi kalau orang kecil yang ribuan kita sentuh, tak ada apa-apa. Jadi sistem apa macam itu. Anwar's remarks finally prompted the typically reserved Daim to break his silence. Daim vehemently denied involvement in corruption or improper conduct, describing the investigation as a politically motivated witch hunt against his family. He criticized Anwar's statements as reckless and baseless insinuations, demonstrating Anwar's animus against him. Daim also asserted that, as the Prime Minister, Anwar's actions resembled interference or influence on an ongoing investigation, which he deemed highly inappropriate and an abuse of power. Emphasizing his status as a former high-ranking government official, Daim highlighted that he had maintained silence to allow the investigation process to proceed. However, he expressed disappointment that the Prime Minister and the MACC did not show the same respect, continually making unnecessary statements. Hence, he felt compelled to step forward to defend his reputation. The MACC subsequently clarified that they were lawfully investigating Daim based on information from the Pandora Papers, emphasizing that they had never stated that Daim had committed a crime. It's noteworthy that after the MACC's significant investigation into Daim, Mahathir mocked the authorities, suggesting they should investigate everyone holding the title Tun and even detain these individuals until they disclose the sources of their funds.
Dime's vast and mysterious wealth, power in politics and business, and love-hate relationship with Mahathir Muhammad and Anwar have made the MACC's current investigations even more intriguing and talked about. What lies ahead for Dime's fate? Stay tuned to Malaysia Kini and Kini TV for continuous monitoring of the rich and powerful. We also welcome your support by scanning the QR code for donations to encourage us to create more quality content.